Hello and welcome to this video guys. Today we're going to talk about Angular elements utilizing standalone components in order to generate a UI library which then can be used in any other application. So the first thing we need to do in our Angular application is navigate to package.json because we want to add Angular elements so we can go ahead and install it. Hence it needs to match uh, the CLI version so npm angular inst and PEM install Angular elements and then we can specify our version. So in our case, we're using 15.0.4. All right, so once this is done, we can go ahead and generate a component the normal way. So we would just go to the app here, right click, open integrated terminal. So we'll go with ng generate component. Let's, let's say we're going to generate a component within the UI, we'll generate a UI module and then we're going to name it input. In this way we want to also inline the styles because we, we don't want different files just for this uh, purpose and we're going to make sure that it's standalone as well which means it doesn't need to be combined or added into the app module whatsoever. It will be complete standalone from the application. So going to the input file now we have inlined the template, we have inlined the CSS here so we don't need any other boilerplate code. So the thing we can do is essentially we can go ahead and add, um, sorry, we can go ahead and add a div for a form control. We're going to add a label, also going to add an input here. So just to make it more uh, reusable, we're going to add an input ID here so that it can be reused. We're also going to say it's, it will be the ID of the input ID here. We're going to prompt the label, of course, and then we are going to say if we have a label, we want you to print this, otherwise we do not want you to print a label. And we're also going to take in a value here. Uh, so now you can see there's a couple of thread stuff. We need to make sure we have input inputs for this. And let's go ahead and just close this one down real quick. So we'll have an input, we'll import it. We'll say, okay, all right, input ID. We're going to, to generate a random string, string. So just for the ID in case we forget to pass it in. If we do pass it in, it might be because we want to have automated test or something like this, but for now we're not going to, to go that route. Uh, also, we're going to have a value, but also we want to make sure that the type is something we can customize from outside. So we're going to also want to add some type. All right, so what we want to do now is essentially we want to say all of the values we pass in should only have a certain type. So we can say interface, uh, sorry, type, uh, input value, in this case, and it's going to be able to take a string number and undefined. That's all. It's not supposed, you're not 100% sure that you're going to pass something in. It's going to be like this in this case. Uh, as for the type, there's a couple of things we want to support. So input type, text number, email, password is not needed for this example here. And you can go ahead and add whatever you would like. So the reason to why we have this is essentially when you utilize it in the HTML, you can receive the error prompt immediately. There's no need to have enums because if you have enums, you would have to declare a read only prop in the component you're using it in order for you to actually utilize it within the HTML. That's why we're using types here. That's why I prefer to use types anyway. So once we're up here, we have the component, we have a label, we have an input. Now let's add some stylings for it to look a bit nice. We can say for the form control, we want it to be display block, margin bottom. We want to say 16px, forget about rems for now. We also want to say the label and the input once we want it to be appearing on its, its own row. So we can say display block and we want the input to have, uh, we want it to have a certain padding. So eight pixels in this case, border, sizing, uh, sorry, box border, uh, oh my God, box sizing, border box, sorry. And this is because we want the 100% width to actually involve the padding that we have here. So with 100%, so now we have a couple of stylings for it. So it looks not totally trash. It won't look good because it's, yeah, it's too little for now. We're doing this for the visual, visual purposes. So we have styles, we have HTML for it. And now what we can do is essentially we need to make sure that we can export it. And we're getting to that part shortly. So it's defined to be standalone. Hence, we need to import a common module in order for use to utilize Angular stuff that's uh, specific for the application. So what we can do now is there's a couple of things we want to do. So we need to navigate to the main TS file. And this is the way you would bootstrap a normal Angular application. And hence, this is not a normal Angular application. So we'll just comment this out real quick. We're going to add an async query 
function like this. So here we're going to generate the app. So we're, we're using it so that we can use that weight here. So we'll create an application through the Angular browser that we're, we're utilizing here, platform browser. And here we're going to specify the providers we want. In this case, we have no global provider. So just skip that for now. And we're going to say, hey, we have the input element we're going to generate. So create custom element. And here we are in, in let's see here, let's import this. It should be coming from, yeah, custom, create custom element. It should come from import custom element from Angular elements in this case, all right? So once this is done hoovering, we can see the first one is going to be the com component and the second thing is going to be the, the actual element. So, or essentially the config of the element. So first here we, we created the input component and in for the second one, it's going to take an injector. That's all that's mandatory in this case. And we're going to fetch the injector from the app that we created. So now we have essentially created the custom element, but we also need to define the name of it. So in this case, we're going to go with cus uh, custom elements dot define. And it, here's the name we'll actually make sure that it gets when we use it in the other application. I'm going with DBS for dev by seb input, and we're going to pass in the input element here. So we're saying, ah, oh, you're going to use these tags. So in this case, in the other application, you would utilize it in like in this way. So hence, this needs to match. It's the selector that we will essentially have when you use it. So now when we have something like this, we should be able to build it and use it within an HTML immediately. So what we can do in this case, and also let's navigate to package.json before real quick. There's a couple of things we want to do. All right. So for the build, we want to say output hashing none. The reason to why we want this is essentially we want to remove the hashes from the build because we want to combine the files that we're building into one file. So and we also want to package this application so that it appears within one file so that we can easily copy and paste it right so this we're going to essentially utilize uh, the cat logic here to essentially combine runtime polyfill polyfills um, main and we are going to yeah we're going to send this into a specific specific file that we have so in this case this angular component let's call it component lib.js so in this case when we build it we'll receive a couple of build files we can go ahead and try this out and you see what happens so when we build the project now given we don't have any errors within the application now also note that it's not running with output hashing and so on and you will see why and you will see what's happening so it, it will generate this folder here with uh, a couple of build files. So allow it a couple of seconds. So you'll see here, it has a lot of hashes here. So it will be extremely difficult for us to actually select these files. So output, output hashing in this way will, will remove all of the numbers. So it will be only main polyfill and runtime. And this is what we're going to use to combine into the next file that we have. All right. So once this is done, uh, let's see here. We, we save it. So we need to rebuild it now with the correct build options here. So it should be output hashing. So building it again, it will run this with output hashing and you will see the difference here within the naming of the files. So allow it a couple of seconds. And since I'm using the cater, keep in mind that this is something you can utilize within bash. It's not something you can utilize within the PowerShell. So I would just close this and utilize my bash. Um, I think the equivalent of it would in Windows would be type, but I'm not entirely sure you can look that up real quick. But anyway, if I run npm run package now, what should happen here is that it should combine these three files into a file named component lib. So now we have this file component lib, which essentially is a mix of runtime, polyfill and main. And this is something we can utilize within our new HTML application. So we can just copy this script file and utilize it wherever we want it. So we'll go ahead and just add a index test HTML file here. We'll give it a couple of HTML file features. We're going to import the script here. So since we're in the in the same folder, we can go ahead and then say in the this folder, in the uh, Angular folder, we are going to select the component lib here. And now within this HTML document, we can start using our dev by sub input component that we generated. Also, we can pass in a label, my label, 
can pass in a type. This is going to be text. Uh, and we can give it a, a default value here, uh, which could be hello world. So saving this and opening it, I will open it in a browser real quick. All right, now that we're, that we're back with it, I just essentially opened this index.txt file within the browser here, and we can see that it in fact has a label. My label, it also has the, the value here, which is essentially hello world. And you might now think, how can I use this within our HTML file? So as you might have noticed, we didn't add an output listener. So we're going to add, go ahead and add an output here. So when, when value changes, we're going to um, emit the value so that we can set up a listener to listen for this within the HTML. This is just going to be, let's see, we imported it from Angular Core as well. Perfect. So it's giving the input value here defined all right so when we change it so on input we're going to just say that this uh, value change emit and we're going to set the value here so we can add a lot of logic here and then we can set up the listener and hence this is the event listener that we need to set up from the the index test html file we'll get to that shortly so now the next step would essentially to make sure that we have this on input function so input so this means whenever you type something we're going to do this and also keep in mind that we are going to pass the event here so we need to receive it and we need to mutate it let's see here event and then we're going to say that target and we're going to pass in target value so this value equals to target value in case we want to have the the value still in this this one all right so now we're pretty much set up for it so always remember that when when you build or change something you need to you need to you need to build and you need to repackage it right so you need to run npm run build and npm run package so what it does is it will create a build and from the build it will package it into this file that we have so once this is done we should now be able to essentially just start working with it um, start creating the the uh, reusable components that we just generated and so once this is up and running now, we'll see reloading, no change, but what you need to do here, since this is HTML, we need to use the script here to bind a couple of things. So what we would do in this case is, let's say we have the label hello, or let's say name, and then we would have email, and we would say email, and then we would have, I don't know, something else, say, um, uh message in this case i will have a text just for visibility visibility purpose all right so reloading we should see we should have a couple of things already here this should be of type email um, and now we should be able to wrap it within a form and we can add a button here hence i'm adding it outside so we don't have a so it's not bound to the actual form but we can move it inside but we need to say this is going to be a button so that it does not automatically submit the form when we press it so when we press this button sorry <laughs> i'm using angular logic so when, when we do this we should get form values so now we're going to essentially try to fetch the values of the form in this case all right so what we can do now is essentially just create a function which would select a form so maybe it would be much better to get a, a user an id here is, instead of having the query selector we can set get document a get element by id sorry um and we can fetch the form data and we can print the form data in this way this is the normal way you would have to do it but since this is essentially um using our elements here this won't work unfortunately so what you would have to do in this case is essentially you would have to fetch the form and then you would say the form child children um and then you would have to loop through it so let's say we map in order for us to get an object out of this and we can say cons data equals to this remove the array syntax from here it was just a mistake um, and here we're going to return the the label and the value of the input for each field so every time we press the button we should be able to get the values and all uh, yeah sorry we need to do this array dot from generate an array from this so now we should have an array and you can see we have undefined and value this is the button that we have so we need to make sure that we in some way 
can remove it. All right, so what we can do here, since it's not really, since it's fetching all of them, we can change from form children to query selector all. And here we can essentially say DBS input. So we're sec selecting them by our input. So if I reload and I click on the submit, in this case, let's add the text. So submit or whatever we wanted to do, you'll see that we have the values changing the message here should also change uh, the value here. So with a simple function here, which we essentially could build in if we wanted to uh, and created a like a custom logic for, for this to print all of the forms. Um, this is one way of actually utilizing the Angular components generated to Angular elements, which in this case is used within a, a basic HTML file. So what, what can we do now in order for us to actually, let's say we want to set up listeners on the value change that we had. So there's a couple of ways you can do this, right? So either we could say array from, and then from DBS input, we could say for each one of the elements, we are going to set up a couple of things. So we can set up listener for all of them if you would like to. I don't see any point unless you are actually um, add event listener, sorry, add event listener. And instead of input here, it should be value change because this is essentially what we're outputting towards. And this is where we should be able to listen to it. So if I save this now and I start writing, there should come up a couple of console logs for us, which it seems to not be doing for some reason. Um, what we can do now is we can, can just make sure that it comes in here. So console log input the value it does not come in here so we are yeah of course sorry we're putting it within the function that's kind of why it's not working um we need to do this as soon as the code is initialized so that it actually sets up the listener so now writing here we should be able to to do some logic towards it. if you would have a search logic or anything you could react to it in in this way otherwise i do not see any purpose doing this um all right, guys, this is how you essentially can utilize standalone components with Angular elements to generate a, comp a component library, which then can be used both for your Angular application, but it could also be utilized for other applications that you have. Thanks for watching. All the best. Bye.